Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate you a different way of creating a virtual machine image uh, using a different technology called Packer. Uh, why? Because it gives you more opportunities to configure how the image is being built and may save you some time because of some performance benefits uh, this brings. Okay, so there's a work item for this. I'll set it to active and then um, let me go into the corresponding pipeline that has implemented that all that stuff, all that code that is required for building an image using Packer. So it's this pipeline here. And if you look into the code of this pipeline, you may notice a schedule here on top. So in the schedule statement here on top, you'll tell Azure DevOps to launch your pipeline automatically on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at two in the morning meaning um, it will create an image at these times um, against my master branch. And in my master branch, I have my environment file, which specifies the Azure subscription to go against uh, to, for creating that image. However, um, I don't want to wait. So I launch that pipeline manually so that we can see something right now. Um, it does the following. It uh, checks out the stuff from the source code hands it over to the build agent and this build agent now or will then get the installation bits required for running Packer. So that means um, every time this pipeline is being run, um, you install the latest Packer uh, basics or the latest Packer uh, software from HashiCorp, which is the uh, inventor if you will um, of of Packer right so the first thing that will happen is that um, Packer is being built and then um, the next thing is that we are going to customize the virtual machine that is being created so I want this virtual machine you know to have the latest updates I want it to have um, certain software pre-installed and um, and then maybe some language packs installed and all of that is not in my packer file it is in a powershell script and this powershell script is uploaded onto a storage account which you will see here and if you go to the details there you say you see that it's also going under the setup artifacts and it's the packer install file and with that a software zip file which contains the software that should be installed during the packer phase. So uh, currently you see um, um, the bits that are being installed for getting packer up and running. Now packer is up and running. You'll see that um, in, with the greenish part here. And what packer does is packer creates a resource group, which is, you know, are used for or temporarily used for um, the image creation right and um, one benefit of Packer is you can you know specify this uh, the resource group um, sometimes you need this uh, why because um, if you have policies in place in your Azure subscription that requires to tag a resource group um, you need to obviously specify a tag before, otherwise the creation of the resource group will fail. And this is something that you can do with Packer. If you want to see how it's done, have a look in the Packer configuration file, which is the HCL file in the code repository. So within that resource group, um, there are some Azure artifacts being created um, because obviously when you want to have a virtual machine image, you first need a virtual machine um, uh, to use for doing your customizations, right? So Packer is creating a virtual a temp virtual machine, if you will, in that temp resource group. And then it applies the operating system um, that you have chosen in your Packer configuration file. So in the code repository, and I'll um, suggest you'll go into uh, the Packer directory, you will find a an HCL file ending there and within that file you'll see 
uh, which type of virtual machine to be used for creating that image, which base operating system to be used, um, and some other settings, maybe some post installation scripts to be used, right? So feel free to have a look in there. What is happening currently? Um, and I speeded that up, um, as you can see from the, from the timer in the background. This is my current um, PowerShell script that has been launched within the virtual machine, right? So it might be interesting what is happening there. Um, and you have it all in your code repository. So uh, I'll navigate you to the corresponding PowerShell file and the resources that are going to be deployed. So uh, go to the uh, Pekka branch or the Pekka directory in your code repository and the setup artifacts is the folder containing the PowerShell script that is being launched for customizing that image and the software zip file is the one that contains yeah, the applications that should be installed during that Pekka build. So in order um, and I cannot, you know, sort of upload a third party software here in my code repository and sh share it with the public. Um, so if only I remove those uh, with placeholders and you need to upload your software packages that you want to deploy, right? So um, therefore I'm cloning this code repository to my local box using Git. Um, you may download your git client um, for Windows or whatever operating system you're using, um, feel free to do so. Uh, there are loads of um, tutorials out there. However, it's the easiest way to play and modify the contents, uh, even if they are larger, like adding software packages. So I'm cloning the repository locally to a local drive. Um, and then once that's done, I'm um, uploading software and uh, modify the command parameters for the unattended installation. So here's my code repository locally on my local box. I navigate you to the directory for the uh, Pekka installation bits, which is under the setup artifacts folder. And within that, you can see from the size of the software zip, it doesn't really contain much software because that would be much larger than. So um, let me expand this to give you a uh, look. So as you can see from the file names, um, you should replace these files with the, you know, uh, with the real files uh, you can download from the internet. And this is what I'm doing right now. So I'm opening a second uh, directory downloading and preparing the uh, installation bits. And there might be some work to do, right? So if you look at the left hand side and the right hand side, um, some paths do not match because there are newer versions out there. So we need to play a little bit around with that. So for Visual Studio Code seems to be okay. Um, but uh, and for Notepad++ maybe as well. However, you may use the 64-bit version for Notepad++, not the 32-bit that I used here. With Paint.net, it's um, you need it needs a little bit more provisioning if you want to do so. Um, go to the uh, paint get Paint.net website and look for the unattended uh, setup. Uh, basically, what it does is um, it downloads a. Uh, you need to you know, create an MSI file, a Microsoft installer file out of the executable you can download here. So if you're interested, that's how it's done. So you navigate to that directory where the, uh, uh, the package is. Then you run the uh, web installer with the create MSI option. And what it does, it downloads the bits um, and creates an MSI package, which will take a while. So that's why I speeded that up as well. So what will happen in the end is uh, the MSI file will be created and packaged in, uh, uh, in a folder on your desktop. So here it is. And uh, all you need to do is cut out 
this MSI and put it into the folder. And next, let's replace the placeholder files with the real installers. So as names have changed or the, uh, the file names have changed, we need to, you know, modify these values uh, in the corresponding PowerShell script, which, you know, executes the installers to be run unattendedly. So open this tool or open the PowerShell uh, Packer install in the editor of your choice and navigate to the code lines that trigger the installation and see if the path is still valid. So Notepad has a newer version um, and if we want to install that we need to, you know, copy and paste the name. And one hint, uh, please use the 64-bit uh, version, not the 32-bit one uh, like I used here. So we will repeat the steps for the other two installation files. So basically you would not need to do that, uh, right? If you don't want to install this kind of special software, there is no need. Uh, Packer, the Packer pipeline will run um, and uh, uh, successfully however the software is not installed then um, but that should just give you an idea on how to install software or customize uh, the image with your with your software so the next thing I'm going to do is create a zip package uh, which is called uh, software.zip and I'll package the files the installers um, directly into the zip file so no big subdirectory structure um, please also stick to the name software.zip as um, you may need to uh, you would need to change uh, the, uh, the paths in various occasions so if you're using that you should be fine so then I'm uh, exchanging uh, the old software zip file with the new one uh, that is containing the real software installers and place it beside the PowerShell script. Delete the working directory if you want to. And the next thing is that we need to upload it to our code repository using Git. And the process is like to add every file that has changed to the commit you type git add dot and then you'll have to commit the change with a mes message and um, we say git commit dash m and then we say something like uh, upload the real installers and finally we have to do a git push in order to upload the new files to our code repository so that the Azure DevOps pipeline can use the new bits. And that depends, and that, and the speed, how fast this is, depends on uh, your internet connection. Uh, be patient here. You're transferring some megs. And once that's finished, we can have a look at the code repository. So under the setup artifacts, you should see um, the commit message checking that uh, the upload has been done successfully. Okay. So that was our short excursion into the PowerShell script that is being executed right now within the virtual machine, um, doing its customization like installing software. And have a look at the monitor view um, at the right-hand side so you could trace um, what is happening uh, within that virtual machine from a CPU storage and IOPS perspective. Quite interesting if you have to wait uh, some time. Uh, but by the end of the, um, the pipeline run, and uh, this can the time can vary from time to time, depending on how much updates you uh, it needs to download, um, you should have a image uh, artifact within the Packer resource group. And from there, you could use it to create another desktop, for example, by going over to the 
uh, to a session uh, session host and add some more desktops and um, selecting the image is quite easy you go to see all images select your items and choose the image that was just created and depending on what software you are installing you'll end up with more or less applications on that system